Mary. Thank you. So you've been in this position, and Dow has been transforming. It merged, it's splitting, it's mm -hmm. all kinds of things going on. Talk a little bit about just how long you've been there, what your role is, and, and how are you ever going to fill the shoes of Neil Hawkins? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> Neil is a giant in this, and I know many of you in the audience know him very well, and I've, I've, he's doing well. He's at the Herb Foundation and really um, enjoying his new role. Um, I've been on the job five and a half months. Um, I can't even say six months yet. I've only been on the job five and a half months. Uh, but it is an amazing time to be uh, in the role. You know, when, uh, when we came on Tuesday, you talked about being in a movement, and we are in a movement um, at a very critical time in, in our Earth's, you know, life cycle. Um, but at Dow, you know, for me, uh, to come in to lead this is very humbling uh, because we have an extremely strong commitment to sustainability that's been going on for 30 years. Right. And to step into that role um, at a time when our company is really focused on this um, is just phenomenal. Yeah, and just to be clear, we'll, we'll round up to six months that you've been in this job. <laughs> um, you're not new to Dow. No, no, I've been with Dow 30 years. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that, that we want to talk about is this uh, organization that you, uh, I don't know how to articulate, articulate it, co-founded or helped co-found, but definitely uh, in a part of and, and it seemed to be at the leadership, in the leadership role of is the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. Talk a little bit about what it is first and sure. uh, then we'll talk about the why and the how. Sure, so um, the plastics waste issue is the challenge of our time, and we've heard that many times um, already. The Alliance to End Plastics Waste is a group, about 30 right now, and we're always looking for new members, shameless plug, um, that Dow helped uh, found with P&G and others um, to really tackle this problem. You know, what is it that we can do to help solve the challenge of plastics waste in the environment? Because plastic really is something that we can't waste. It has tremendous value, and, and what do we do to solve that? So uh, you have members, about 30 members. There, mm -hmm. there are uh, other brands. Um, I mean, there are brands, right. uh, the con consumer brands. There are the um, other chemical companies. Uh, ExxonMobil Chemical, I know, is yeah. is uh, BSF, I assume, or is Pepsi. a member. Well, the, the chemical companies, then you've got yeah. the, the, the downstream yeah. brands. Um, the members that you, they, they write a check, I assume. And what else do they do? Well, the commitment of the members is $1.5 billion over a five-year period. To invest. Not, to invest. Those aren't dues. Right. No, no, these are not dues. This is about <laughs> investing in projects that impact or help impact the issue. You know, for example, one of the projects that is already ongoing is a Renew Ganja River project where it's looking at how to prevent waste from getting into the river. And I think that you know, that's, uh, that's the kind of work that the Alliance is going to do. It's about action. Um, also, all the companies then. So, 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 so let's just, uh, how do you do that? You have money. You've got this, all this, uh, this firepower from a brand and, and supply chain perspective. You're, you're going to be t working with people on the ground to build infrastructure mm -hmm. that then allows you to take back more plastic that you can actually use? Is it, what's the vision here from the Dow perspective? Oh, okay, from our perspective, what we're looking at is, is you know, projects that make sense, um, but the idea is, is to prevent the waste from getting you know, where it shouldn't be, right? That's the number one issue. So uh, currently we have, um, without even asking, 400 projects in the queue that we're evaluating to you know, pick the best ones for best impact. Uh, so that's what the Alliance is focused on currently. So I've heard, um, uh, not necessarily you, maybe you, but other chemical companies talking about the fact that um, this technology to, first of all, you have the ability and, and the desire to turn plastic back into plastic and to supplant uh, the, the petrochemicals that you, the raw materials that you traditionally use, and that that technology has been around for a long, long time. It's been on the shelf largely. Um, mm -hmm. Why now? Why is it? And I guess the question is, to be more specific, how much of this is being pushed uh, on you by the, the, the world, really? Um, uh, and how much of it, that this is something that you need to do because people are asking you to do it? And how much of it is simply that you need to do this to grow in the ways that you plan to grow over the next few decades? Yeah, well, um, you know, we, we talk about plastic, uh, plastics being a valuable resource, right? And we know that plastic is one of the most sustainable um, uh, materials for things like you know, medical applications, packaging. Um, it brings so much to the table. Um, it, it's much more uh, sustainable than other you know, wood or, or papers in, in its environmental impact. Um, you know, for us, 
Uh, it's really about how do we, you know, we are committed to circularity in the operations that we have, and how do we, how do we make our, the plastics waste that, you know, is in the environment as a producer, how do we, you know, put that back into, you know, back into uh, our, our operations. One of the, I think one of the issues that we have now is, is we're, we're using a combination of different types. You know, you talked about chemical recycling, um, mechanical recycling, all, you know, um, all different types of, of recycling opportunities. Um, you know, which one is best and how do you get it to scale? Um, you know, but for us, it's really about the idea of investing um, in the right technologies, innovating the right technologies, and then collaboration. And we've heard a lot about collaboration this yeah. week. Well, so you answered the how question, but I'm still trying to get to the question of why. What's driving this right now? Uh, well, how much of it's external? How much of it's internal business fundamentals? How much of it's external stakeholder expectations, societal expectations? Right. The world is telling us that this is what they need and what they want, and so we're responding to that. But you see that this is uh, an opportunity? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different applications um, for plastics waste, and I, I brought one with me today. Um, we were taking a look at it. This is, uh, this is a plastic brick. This is a brick that's made out of a recycled plastic. Um, you know, so, the, so what we're doing with this is in Latin America, um, we are building schools using these interlocking plastic bricks. Um, we've built four schools so far with eight more um, on the books. And each one of these schools takes out 16 tons of plastics waste out of, out of this. And, and so the, that's made, what kind of plastic is that, mixed? Yeah, it's a mixed, mixed use so plastic. Any, so any it's all plastic? kinds of different. Can I pass this around? You may. Um, we'll pass this around, and uh, it's got an RFID chip, so we know where it is. So. <laughs> um, and, and, and is this something, is this a one-off? Is this something you see doing at scale? What, what's the uh, Well, we're doing, this, you know, we're doing this right now, and it's scaling up. Um, one of the other things that we're doing is, is we're looking at plastics in asphalt um, as an amendment in asphalt. So we've, we've already put down about 60 miles of roads. Um, and it's becoming, uh, you know, it, it's, it's better, uh, has better performance. It can be 15 to 30% more durable um, than traditional asphalt. So we're, we're doing that. And we're actually in, in, our, uh, in our global Dow Center, in our headquarters in Midland, we're actually putting a parking lot in in the next several weeks, which, which will be a plastic asphalt parking lot. And is that in the, uh, I know the, your headquarters is, but is it uh, public roads in the U.S.? Or we are going to, yeah, we're putting some, um, we have some opportunities to do that on public roads in the U.S., and that's continuing. And, and uh, I guess one of the things that I hear a lot is, is, in, is that there's a lot of small little projects, and I'm not saying this about Dow, I'm saying this more about the industry, uh, small little projects that all sound great, mm -hmm. you know, bricks for South American schools, uh, supplanting uh, asphalt with uh, waste plastic in effect. Um, but, there's, but they're small and they're, they, don't ever, they don't necessarily scale and they, there's a sort of weird term for it called pilot washing. You know, they just do these little things that we talk about but they're not really, this, what's your intention here? Is this, uh, is this uh, are you trying to put these things out there to demonstrate and, and hope that someone else takes them over or, and, and scales them? Or is this something that Dow wants to scale and be in those businesses? Yes, we want to bring things to scale because it's important for us. I mean, to, to feed our assets, we need things at scale. Um, we actually, in our business, have uh, individuals that are focused on recycling as uh, commercialization and, you know, how do we get it, how do we use recycling uh, to feed our crackers and how do we look at circularity in the, in the whole system. Um, so for us, that's really about the investment. You know, we need to make sure that we invest in, in mechanical recycling, in chemical recycling, um, other types of recycling that are available. So that's all under investigation in our business model. Yeah, the, so the mechanical recycling, I know, I, I sort of level set a little bit, it's been the traditional brute force, right. <coughs> excuse me, turn, you know, beat things up into small little pieces and turn them back into, uh, I guess, melt them down and turn them into things like that, mm -hmm. right, the, the brick. Uh, chemical recycling is a, is a more, it's an old process. It's been this sort of the been on the shelf stuff where you mm -hmm. can put old plastic back in and, and of various types, I understand. I mean, I've heard, talk with some companies that are really being able to do this with almost any kind of plastic and you're actually bringing it back down to the polymer level, in which case you can build it back up into any number of things. Um, is that, where, where is chemical recycling in your, and is that something, a biz, that's a business you want to be in or is that part of your new or bigger growing part of your value chain? How does I think that that's part of the, the whole picture to look at, okay, so how do we take a package like this? This is a Dow Recycle Ready package and you know, chemically recycle it. Um, so this is part of the whole the whole yeah. picture. We're, we have yeah, to look at everything. Camera all angle the here on this uh, seventh generation package. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
And it's, uh, this is a uh, detergent, a bag, basically? Yeah, it's made out of a, a Dow film. Uh -huh. um, a lot, we, we do a lot of innovation. And, and tell me more about this film. Is this from a recycled material, or is this, is this a virgin, or is, this, is the idea this, that it's just a lot less packaging than there was it's, before? It's less packaging, but it's also recyclable. So on the back, and, and many of you have seen this, it's a recycle-ready package. It's part of our, our innovations. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do with our customers a lot is, is how do we innovate with you? We bring them to what we call packed studios. Um, and we have those at various uh, locations around the globe where we bring customers in and we say, okay, what is it that you need us to help you innovate? Um, and these are, the, these are the types of packaging that come out of that um, interaction at Pack right. Studios. So what will it take for these kinds of things, the chemical cycling, these newer kinds of packaging, the being able to turn waste into, into value, what will it take for that to become the, the norm and the, the lion's share of what you do and not little niche projects. Yeah, I, for us, I think it's, it's about us coming together and collaborating. I mean, we talked about the alliance bringing people together, but there are all kinds of different opportunities for us to come together. And, um, and the us in this is, is chemical companies coming together? It's everybody, it's, government, it's brand. Yeah, NGOs, <coughs> um, you know, uh, communities, really communities. We have, you know, many opportunities with communities in our hefty energy bag program where we're, we're helping them recycle, you know, pla or plastics like this more effectively. Um, but it's about all of us, all of us, one, understanding what it is that we need to do, because we all have a responsibility in this also, and then how do we collaborate with one another, and sometimes with people that we're not used to collaborating with, um, to find the right answer to solve this so challenge. So who would be an unusual collaborator in this case? Well, for us, like, you know, if we talk about for Dow um, in our history, uh, the Nature Conservancy. We have a long history now, almost 10 years. It's, right. We're in our ninth year. Um, the Nature Conservancy and Dow partnered to talk about how to make better decisions using nature and business. Actually putting a monetary right. value on ecosystem services and how that factors into your Absolutely. capital allocation yeah. decisions. And so, you know, when, when that started, obviously very unlikely bedfellows, yeah. you know, the Nature Conservancy and Dow. And same with this. I mean, we're, we're working um, with folks that we've never, you know, worked with before and we're seeing results. I mean, Circulate Capital, I think we've invested in that, which is one of the um, Oceans Conservancy um, all kinds of different uh, organizations that are coming together to get at this together. You mentioned policy, you mentioned government. What's the role of government and which government, at what level and in what part of the world? Well, I think that we've all seen um, what governments are, are doing right now and it's, and it's a lot of it, it's about banning plastic. And that's, I don't think that's the right answer, right? There is value in, in everything that we do. So what we need uh, for our, our governments or our agencies, whoever we're working with, is to really understand the science and the value of plastic and then how they can become involved in the recycling. So how, give an example of where you see that working, how that change is, is, is the right kind of change that, that's already taken place. Yeah, well we talked a bit about, I just mentioned our hefty energy bag program. Um, where we're seeing municipalities that are interested in, in making a change in how they do their work and then in, in turn um, impacting their region and protecting their state. We have um, in Georgia, in Cobb County, we have a hefty energy bag um, program where that municipality or that government is, has decided that they're going to work with us um, to help us recycle plastics yeah. more. And I think that's a great way uh, to start. I think uh, probably most people in this room are watching this on the live stream mm -hmm. would I'm thinking, I'm get, I may be on a limb here, that, that, that would agree that plastic is not the enemy. Plastic waste or is the problem. Plastic is the problem. And, and yet you've got all these plastic bans and you've got this public outcry against straws and they see the mm -hmm. YouTube videos and, and, and it's, there's this whole social media movement going on around straws and tops and disposables. How, how do you change that dynamic to, to align better with what I think, you know, probably the plastic is not going to go away, or nor should it, for reasons that you've stated. It brings a lot of uh, life cycle benefits and, and not to mention convenience and safety and all kinds of things. How do you change that dynamic? Well, this has value. This has value. And I think that we, we need to learn what that value is and then how do we put that back into, into uh, the yeah. cycle with the value. And I think many, that's, that's one of the things that many people don't maybe understand is, is that this has tremendous value to all of us. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking of this from the perspective, and I want to get to some questions in just a minute, uh, to the, of the alliance, because this is the alliance, it's not the, it's not the alliance to end plastic. It's the alliance to end plastic waste. Right. 
and, and, and yet there is a movement to end plastic. Mm -hmm. how do you, what's the opportunity or the responsibility or the, how do you see the path for that for this group of, of great, uh, great companies that have come together? Yeah, I, I, for the alliance, and, and you know, we talk about, you know, we know that plastic <coughs> has, we, it has value. It's an extremely sustainable material. I mean, we gotta understand how plastic doesn't get where it shouldn't be. And I think that's what the alliance is really focused on. We also need to educate. I was gonna say, is public education part of your uh, remit? Uh, it is. I mean, we talk about this all the time. And you know, when we go out, when you know, again, it is how do you get consumers to understand which of these, which of these is, is recyclable? How can we help innovate with our customers? You know, to help our brands that that work with us um, be able to more readily explain to their customer that this package is recyclable yeah. and how to recycle it. That's a bit of an uphill climb. But uh, yeah. let's take Heather questions or Sarah. This is very difficult because there's a couple that we really want to ask, but I think we only have time for one. By the way, they love pilot washing. Yes. You've, you've created a meme. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, go one, ahead, Sarah. One thing that keeps popping up is uh, the flow of this, how we've gone from a, a discussion about how recycling is broken, broken in its current form and how we need to be changing how we're doing things next to uh, the innovations of plastic itself. So I, we'd love to know about how Dow would support an initiative to also be decreasing the amount of plastic and how to ensure that the new products are actually being recycled and going on to its next life. Yeah. I, again, you know, it, for us it's about value of plastic. I mean, we, um, our consumers, are, or I should say our, our customers are helping us understand what they need. So we need to provide what they need. And one of the things is, you know, we're focused on bringing new innovation and new technology to, re you know, to recycle or, or understand how we can put more recycled plastic in the market. And your customers in this case are, are uh, packaging or uh, packaged brand brands, owners, primary yeah, brand owners. Brand owners uh, do you find that, that they are as interested in changing as you are? In other words, uh, do you find some of them coming to you with, with uh, specking plastics that just seem wrong uh, from a uh, chemical perspective and from a recyclability perspective, given the current uh, uh, zeitgeist, I guess. Well, I, I don't have exact knowledge of that, but what I can tell you is, is the brand owners that work with us that I've spoken with, um, they are absolutely committed to improving the recyclability of the product and working with us to innovate those. Yeah. So where, where will the uh, uh, alliance be when we uh, come together at, let's say, Circularity 21? Um, well, we'll have a CEO. We'll have an organization. Hopefully well before that. Yes, yeah, well we will have a CEO probably this summer, uh, mm -hmm. the, the goal is this summer, um, that we will be implementing projects and we, we will be taking action forward to prevent waste from getting where it shouldn't be. But be a little more specific, what kinds of uh, outcomes or what kinds of projects will be in the ground and where will this be mostly in Asia? Uh, uh, the, the focus right now is in um, Asia. Uh, and the focus is on infrastructure projects. And, and as we're evaluating, you know, the best projects is how do you, you know, how do you help um, put infrastructure on the ground? You know, one of the things that we've been working with is uh, waste to work, um, where, you know, you're actually putting in um, systems, infrastructure in areas that can take plastic and recycle it and make it into something more, more usable or, or of need in that community. And that, I think, began at Procter & Gamble, that, yeah. that pro project, and it was really about taking all kinds of waste and putting it in a facility where nothing comes out that's not, it's really the ultimate circular economy play, nothing comes out that's not uh, water, materials, compost, right. e uh, energy, right. uh, fertilizer, and, and some other things. That's a, it's an exciting, and it hasn't necessarily been done yet, but it's a great vision. Yeah, small scale, but making impacts in communities. So uh, we start creating uh, all, all this, uh, collecting all this material. Is there a uh, ready market? Is there demand for that in the, in the places or we, where it's being collected? Will we be having to shift, uh, ship uh, waste from, let's say, uh, Philippines or Indonesia or India to sum up somewhere else, or are we gonna be able to make plastic locally? Um, that's a challenge. What do you do when we collect the waste, then is there infrastructure to process it, to recycle it? And right now, not, not enough exists. And then how do you integrate that into our, our processes? And that's technology that we're advancing right now. Um, we are working uh, with uh, a project, a MRF project, where we're working with a MRF to help, you know, how do we just take a single stream and how yeah. do we recycle that single stream? Yeah, that's gonna be a big challenge because it if is. we're if we're shipping this stuff across oceans, particularly plastic as lightweight as it is and as little as can go, therefore, on a, on a large vessel, um, that's, uh, we've, we've got to figure out not only how do we collect it locally, but how do we then turn it into value locally and then turn it into products that are distributed locally. I think that's the magic sauce 
and I hope that that becomes part of the conversation. But the conversation that, that you all are having at the Alliance on Plastic Waste is, and at Dow, yeah, I think are really, really important, and it's really great to see you all leaning in in the way that you have. And for whatever reason, I didn't mean to say, you know, oh, you're doing this because you have to. That's fine. No. Uh, that, that it's really, uh, I think, an a, a important conversation and speaks to one of the themes we've been talking about, which is just how we need to collaborate and partner and work together. So, so thank you for that. We're out of thank time, you. but please join me in thanking thank Mary Draves. Thank you, Joel. Thanks thank you very so much. Thank you.